to worship with Westside. It is November the 22nd, 2020. It is the last Sunday in the season of Pentecost. It is Christ the King Sunday. Our words for gathering. Open the eyes of our heart, Lord. Open the eyes of our hearts. We want to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing, Holy, Holy, Holy. In the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer, let us worship God. Our opening prayer. God most holy, you are known to us as the Almighty, powerful, eternal, ruler, and Lord. We also call you our King and Shepherd. We praise you with many names, but we acknowledge that you are beyond our imagination. You are beyond our reasoning. You are so much greater than our words. We know you in the stories and the teachings of your son Jesus, and in him we see your love in action, reaching out to the world. You move in us and through us by your Spirit, drawing us to you, sending us out to live out your word. God most holy, three in one, and one in three. We praise you this morning with our lips and with our lives to offer you honor and love. Mighty and merciful God, Hear us as we confess to you our sins. We confess that we have failed to love fully and forgive wholly. You offer us freedom, but we settle for the familiar. You offer us risky compassion, but we opt for safer choices. You offer us hope. We prefer knowing what will happen next. Encourage us and teach us to abandon selfish ways and cautious service so we can risk offering you our whole lives, committed to following Jesus and building your King here on earth. Amen. And now our opening praise song. Christ's own spirit led. 
Our scripture reading for this morning comes from the Old Testament, from Ezekiel 34, beginning at verse 11. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. A shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so will I look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. I will bring them out of nations and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. The Sovereign God declares, I will pasture my sheep on the mountains of Israel, in the ravines, and in all the settlements in the land. I will tend them in good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing land. There they will lie down in good grazing land, and there they will feed in a rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will tend my sheep and have them lie down. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak. The sleek and the strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For some churches, it is Reign of Christ Sunday. For others, it is Christ the King Sunday. We can tell from the naming of this last Sunday in the season of Pentecost, the Sunday before the season of Advent begins, that the church is not adverse to using kingly imagery and symbolism in worship. It is in our prayers. It is in our praise, hymns, and songs. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. It is in the royal pageantry of orthodoxy and Catholic worship services. It is in the regal architecture of cathedrals and basilicas. For most of my life, I have appreciated this imagery. For much of my life, when I envisioned the throne of Christ, I saw the grace-filled majesty and the compassionate power of that imagery. But I know, I know that all images have shortcomings and, and become stale and, and aren't as relevant, especially with overuse. I know many challenge kingly imagery when describing God or God's Son because it can sound patriarchal and exclusive. So, I went to the Hebrew Scriptures this Christ the King Sunday. And, and not because kingly imagery is absent from the Old Testament. We know that two books in the Hebrew Scriptures are called First Kings and Second Kings. It, it's not that kingly Im imagery is absent from the Old Testament, but in Ezekiel 34, we are presented with another imagery. This passage challenges us to leave the throne room, to, to get out of the palace, to consider a different image. In Ezekiel 34, we find an image that can be seen as the opposite of royal. The image of shepherd. In Ezekiel 34, God speaks 
as a shepherd. The shepherds God had put in charge, the political leaders, the religious authorities, they had failed to do their job. They did not search for the lost and bring back the strays. They did not bind up the injured and strengthen the weak. They did not shepherd the flock with justice. As a leader in this time and place, this passage, this warning, makes me nervous. It should make us all nervous. It's hardly an original observation to note that many of us, people of faith, Christians, that we are comfortable staying within the walls of the palace, staying within the sanctuary. Often it is where everybody kind of looks like us, where we aren't risking anything, where it's clean and beautiful and safe. We like the safety of the sanctuary, a place of comfort, and some privilege. But God is not confined to a place of privilege and comfort. God is willing to engage in the challenging work of shepherding. God asks the same of us to get out of the palace, to be present at times and in places where other people would avoid. God calls us out of the throne room not to just gather in the weak sheep, but to challenge and to speak out against the fat sheep who are ravaging and taking advantage of the weak sheep. In Ezekiel 34, verse 16, God says, the fat and the strong I will destroy. Over the long and sometimes shameful history of the church, it has been tempted to use religious language and religious affiliation, to use even religious doctrine to amass political and corporate power. All too often, in the course of the history of the church, we presumed that the Lordship of Christ conveyed to us Lordship in other arenas. Now, it is fair to point out that we have made strides to reconcile with that history and the people it affected, and, and to confess that history. We still have a long way to go. It is no surprise, though this prophetic vision of Ezekiel was lived out by Jesus the Christ, it is no surprise that when God came in the flesh, God gathered in the weakest sheep and spoke words of warning to the powerful the influential, to the rich. I still acknowledge Christ as my king on reign of Christ's son. But more than ever, I, I see that, that that imagery needs to, to step back if the church is to be relevant for our time and place. We are called to remember the image of God and God's Son as shepherds on a relentless search, speaking truth to the powerful and gathering in the weakest. Let us leave the palace and let us shepherd well. Amen. And so be it.
And now our closing song of praise. <laughs> closing prayer. Generous and gracious God, you envision a world where the hungry are fed and strangers are welcome. We bring you our gifts and our offerings that they may become part of your vision. Bless them and bless us so that all our gifts bear fruit in your Son's name. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, proclaimed your kingdom among us and within us. In the power of the Spirit, your 
Your love is always at work, bringing good out of evil and life out of death. We thank you that your love never lets us go. For you have known us when we are embraced in good times and you recognize and are with us in the hard times that we are presently going through. Almighty God, we acknowledge that your Son came to us as a shepherd. We pray this morning for people who are led astray or are ruled by corrupt or greedy leaders where there is no peace in the land. We also celebrate that your Son came as one proclaiming your kingdom. And so we lift these prayers up in the name of the Lord Jesus, knowing that your King is drawing near and that we meet you in the faces of those who cry out to us. We offer this prayer in Christ's name. Amen. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen.